If you're not a liberal at 20, you have no heart. If you're still a liberal at 40, you have no mind. Let me tell you something. If you're still a liberal, as a young college graduate, after seeing what this man has just done to you, if you're still a liberal, then you have no brains. This rule will admit over 100,000 foreign graduates so that pimply-faced Zucker face can make more money. So that the pimply-faced owner of Facebook can make even more billions. He's not rich enough. You see, you don't understand something about greed. At a certain level, greed is insanity. There's such a thing as ambition, and then there's such a thing as insane desires. There's an insane desire for more gold. I told you the Aztecs used to say that the Spaniards who had invaded their nation had an insatiable desire for gold. After they had destroyed the Aztec civilization, killed so many of them, enslaved them, and uh, stole their gold, they kept looking for more gold. And the Aztecs then said to each other that the Spanish invaders from whom they got their language, by the way, today. The Spanish invaders have a, an illness, an incurable illness called gold sickness. Guys like Zuckerface, Bill Gates, the others in Silicon Valley, have a similar disease. They care nothing about America. America is nothing but one market of many. Although they got their educations here, although they were fed from infancy with the air and the water, and the milk of America. They have no loyalty to these countries, to the country that they were born in. They have a loyalty only to the bottom line. And the bottom line is going to kill us all. 100,000 H-1B visas, green cards to Indians, green cards to Indians primarily, so that the pirates of Silicon Valley can continue their buccaneer actions. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. We're here to celebrate with the psychopath running wild in the White House. And he's warming up now for the final uh, push. Yep. One more year to destroy everything of any value in America. So today he uh, gave out a regulation that he made up on his own mind in, in, in his own head. No Congress needed. After all, he's the great one. And he just broke the immigration system wide open. He destroyed it. He's giving green cards to people on H-1B visas to satisfy pimple face at Facebook. Because Facebook couldn't get any more Indians in because the quotas had been filled, but Facebook, as you well know, lobbied the stooge. He's granting 100000 overnight to allow foreign college graduates into America. He bypassed laws against illegal immigration in 2012 by giving two-year work permits to 800,000 younger foreign migrants who were brought here by their illegal immigrant parents. In 2015, the criminal presidency did it again, from 2009 to 2015, the criminal presidency allowed at least 250,000 Central American illegals into the U.S. requesting asylum or refugee status. Take a look at your cities today. Look at the cesspools they become. I'm sorry, I don't have nice words for cities. I live in them. I walk around them. They're cesspools. And I am the son of an immigrant. But you see, when my people came here, they kept their tenement houses spotless. They took pride in maintaining the front of their tenement building. They swept it. They washed the sidewalks. They would rather have thrown themselves off a fire escape than accept welfare. It was a matter of pride. So there's a big difference between being an immigrant and being a leech. In 2013, the criminal administration added roughly 2 million extra foreign workers to the economy, while 4 million poor young Americans began looking for work. And the object here was to strip American workers of their protection from foreign labor, according to a gentleman who has studied this. And no one is stopping the madman. 
Right now, nearly 650,000 foreign graduates are working in the United States under the fraudulent, corrupted H-1B visa program. You hear the number? Now, the foreign graduates often get, typically get, entry-level jobs that would otherwise go to new United States business grads, to doctors, designers, engineers, scientists, programmers. And the foreign grads that Obama is flooding America with are used to replace mid-level American professionals once they seek mid-career. I don't have to read any more of this. He has committed another crime against the law, another crime against America, another crime against the economy, and nothing happens to him. To me, this is pure evil. To me, the man is the embodiment of pure evil. You know, there's a study out. A test comes out saying, how evil are you? It reveals whether you have Machiavellian traits or show signs of psychopathic behavior. And I'm going to go into that on how to tell if you're a psychopath. You will find that if you apply this test to Barack Obama, he's insane. They include, do you lie to get what you want? Check yes. Is it okay to manipulate others to get what you want? Check yes. How many of the following feelings do you feel on a regular basis, Mr. Obama? Sadness, guilt, love, remorse, emotional pain, or embarrassment, zero. Mr. Obama, do you ever feel any of these emotions because of others around, because others around you do? Mr. Obama, do you ever break into fits of rage for no reason? Mr. Obama, are you skilled at manipulating others? Mr. Obama, do you fake emotions? Mr. Obama, do you think yourself superior to others? These are statements from a self-professed psychopath named Jacob Wells, who said these are questions people can use to determine if they have psychopathic traits. We'll talk about how to spot a psychopath. Of course, you don't have to be a genius to, to do this. No, not at all. How to spot a psychopath from charm to manipulation. The question I raise is, how come he hasn't been stopped? You say, well, come on, you know why, Mike. Of course I know why. I wrote two books on it. Both bestsellers, despite all of the machinations of the left, stopped the coming civil war, went up on the New York Times list, stayed there. My last book, Government Zero, still available. Hit number three on the New York Times list. You think everyone who reads them is, cra is crazy? You think everyone doesn't know what this lying psychopath is doing? But they don't, they no longer have a representative government. If we did, he would have been stopped. You see, we have a puppet progressive Islamist machine inside the Republican Party run by uh, Ryan, the beard. That's Obama's beard. Ryan is Obama's beard. First, uh, Boehner was Obama's beard. Where is Boehner, by the way? He retired to his condo in Jacksonville, we hear. A little sand crab told us that he's retired in Jacksonville, shickered out of his mind every night on his, on his lanai. He got his just rewards. He didn't need too much. A case of scotch a month is all he needed. That's a joke. Yeah, a real joke. See, we have no no opposition party. Normally, if there's an opposition party, they raise objections to 100,000 green cards saying it's going to screw American youngsters out of jobs. We're going to impeach you for it. We're going to fight you tooth and claw. We're not letting you do this. We're going to stop you legislatively. And then we're going to impeach you for doing this. I don't care if it's the last day of your office. You're being impeached. We're holding impeachment hearings January 2nd for what you're doing. That would have stopped them, but they don't want it stopped. You don't understand something. There is no Republican Party. Now, you've heard others say this, who have been Republicans all their lives, went to dinner with George Bush, didn't exactly sleep in the Lincoln bedroom, but let's say they dined in the Lincoln bedroom with Bush. Lifetime water carriers for the Republican Party who suddenly woke up to the fact that the American listener was on to them, and suddenly they became anti-Republican. Okay, good for them. Better late than never. But I've never been a Republican. I've always known who they were. They were the type of kid in high school who would never let me in the fraternity, if you, if you know what I'm talking about. That's who they were. They were the type of kid I never wanted to be around. Never liked that type. The check pants uh, country club type. I'd rather hang around with re recent releasees from San Quentin on a ferry than talk to a Republican. I did. If you Wait till you see some of the writings from my early years. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to get out of myself, the kind of guy I am. I, I told you that in May, I have a, a dog book coming out, my teddy book. The photographer was out a month ago with my publisher. Kate is my publisher for, for Government Zero and Stop the Coming Civil War, but she's a dog lover. 
So she kept saying, you've got to do a dog book about you and Teddy. I love your dog. He's the smartest one. Blah, blah. So they sent the best dog photographer out in the world, Vince Ramini. He's unbelievable. So he got on the floor to, to photograph Teddy. Where do you see these pictures of me? You won't believe it. No, everyone thinks their dog is the cutest, but mine really is. And very few people have a book that is a book of their own. See, this is going to be the best thing I've ever done because it's going to be the only person on earth that I know of who has a, a dog book. Nobody in talk radio will have a book that actually is about their dog. I mean, they can write about it, but it's a picture book about their dog. I'm, I'm secondary to the dog in this book. You know what I'm saying? But the point I'm making, I forgot already. I forgot the train of thought. It's already the end of the year. I'm tired. I went to the worst Chinese restaurant in America last night here in L.A. There is no Chinese food in L.A., by the way. Side note. I'm spoiled. I come from the city of San Francisco, which has the largest Chinatown outside of China, and they have the best Chinese food in the world. New Yorkers don't know Chinese food at all. To them, Greece is, is Chinese. Greece, sugar, and salt is Chinese food. So I have friends down here in L.A. Believe it or not, I, Michael Savage, have friends down here in L.A., and I said, they said, where do you want to go to dinner? You want to go to uh, Beverly Hills? I, can, I said, no, no pasta palaces. I can't stand it. The posing, the noise level, I, I need one night off from it, please. Chinese. They said, well, you know, it's not that good. So we went to the, some obscure district, just as I thought, full of sugar, salt, fat. And you know what I did? I made a decision in advance. I'd eat it anyway. I mean, I told the waitress, low, low oil, no, no, no sugar. It was still salty and fatty. I knocked off the spare ribs like there was no such thing as heart attacks. I looked at the plate of spare ribs. The pig looked like it was still breathing in the leg. I ate them. Drank a few vodkas. I felt great. Sick all night. Migraine to beat the band. Couldn't sleep. In other words, I had a good New York Chinese meal that killed most men by their 52nd birthday. Very nice guy. He's a very, very nice guy. And we're going to go to his house for a New Year's Eve party tonight. And I don't mention names. I'm not a name dropper. But, you know, it's very funny. I told you that I had a chance encounter with, let's say, an iconic actor. I will not mention his name. He was very interested in my, my show and my writings. Ran into him in a deli the other day. He came to my house. I gave him a copy of Government Zero. I'm not going to call him or write him again. I don't intend to bother anybody. Well, tonight I'm going to be with one of the most famous actors in the world at a party who I will not mention because he's a conservative and he still gets work in town. There are conservative actors in Los Angeles, by the way, only they, they don't want you to know it because the left-wing rats who run the city would dismiss them overnight. That's what a, a fascist dictatorship liberalism actually is. So I'll be with you know, a total of ten people. And... Uh, I'll probably, you know, maybe read a little. I won't read from my book. I won't do that. He said, you know, he's a big fan of yours. I said, he's a fan of mine. The guy is known all over the world. He's done billion-dollar movies, yes. So that should be interesting. I don't know. I said, I can't last long. You know, come at 8. It ends at 12.30. I said, I listen, I'm an early sleeper. I'll, I have to leave at 10. He said, no, 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 you have to stay till. You know how long 8 o'clock at night is till 12.30 for me? My show is three hours long. Now, picture this. I'm going to do a three-hour show. I'm going to be exhausted with the leaf chipper the, the, outside the window and the you know, systems breaking down and the show and the nightmare of the luxury hotel and Obama burning the nation down. And then I'm going to meet, actually I'm meeting my friend Robert Davi, who's just back from a sterling tour in, uh, in Estonia. He, he performed over there. They love him. He came back last night. We're meeting tonight for an hour to talk about a movie thing and a novel we're going to write together. Then I'm going to go to a party now for four and a half. That's not my. I'd rather be in bed tonight till it's over. But okay, I'm not going to be in bed. I'm going to be at a thing. I won't be able to eat though because he said I'm making roast beef and Yorkshire pudding and cream corn. I said. I, he said I don't think you're going to be able to eat any of it. He said. I said no. Uh, that's fine. No, but I won't be able to eat any of it. I won't. He said. What I'm going to do tonight? I don't know. Who knows? I'll uh, have a drink and play with the dog, talk to people, and come home early. So what are you gonna, what am I telling you all this for? One, because it's a kind of diversion from the horrors of Barack Obama's insanity and Machiavellian madness. His, uh, his, uh, just his, you know, he's really just a puppet when you think about it. He doesn't benefit from the 100,000 foreign workers directly. But the Democrat, the corrupt, the corrupt Democrat machine benefits because guys like Zuckerface give them tons of money. But he himself doesn't profit from it. 
Uh, he does what they want him to do, those who put him in power. Soros is an open borders guy, the better to destroy a nation and the better to mass.